Uh, today is February 16th, 2017. This is Lessons of the 60s interviewing Susan Stockard today. Uh, Susan Stockard is a, a, a daughter-in-law of James Stockard, who was a civil rights leader in Arlington in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, she had the experience of going to some of the early integrated schools in in, in, in the county, in Arlington County. Um, so we're going to talk to her a little about her experiences today. Can you tell us a little bit about where you lived, uh, how you could, became a part of this family before we start asking you questions? But Certainly. Um, my maiden name is Stuart, Susan Stuart Stockard. Mm -hmm. I did grow up in Arlington uh, and went to um, Stratford Junior High School, the first school in the Commonwealth of Virginia to be integrated. Uh, it, and Stratford was my first experience in public schools. My what year would this be? It was in, that was in 1959, um, so I started in 1958 in the, in the public schools. My parents had sent me to private school for the first six years for reasons that had to do with what I needed educationally, but also to give them a chance to work on the quality of the public schools during that time. So they became friends with the Stockards as part of their efforts to improve the Arlington Public Schools and um, worked very hard on that. I particularly remember my mother's work because she was mostly at home and my father was working full time. Mm -hmm. Did they come from someplace outside of Virginia or were my they? My mother was from Chicago and my father from Western Pennsylvania. And I don't know where their social justice bent came from, but it was very strong and particularly played out by my mother. So what was it like? What was it like? Tell us how old you were and how did, how did they do it? How did they set up the beginning of integration in the schools? Um, I remember, so I had been at Stratford for a year, and the talk was about desegregation of the schools. There was a lot of talk and a lot of work on the part of, as you've heard, of Jim's father, um, and also of volunteers who were working with him and with the schools to bring about integration. We were very excited about it, and I was particularly excited and proud to be going to the first school in Virginia to be integrated. Um, it was a big event, and I um, remember going to school that morning not knowing what to expect, you know, hoping that it would go well and that it would be a peaceful event. Um, there were certainly police presence there, but it was an absolutely calm, normal day. I'm sure there were kids that stayed home. I didn't know anyone who stayed home. Um, and for me, um, I, I remember just being happy at how well it went. I had my first experience in journalism at the end of the day. Coming out of school and walking home, a reporter from the Washington Post stopped me and asked me about the day, and I went on I, eloquently about my feelings <laughs> about desegregation, and the, I picked up the paper the next morning to read. Sue Stewart summed it all up by saying it went pretty well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Deflated. <laughs> so this, though, was a, a junior high, so that you might not have been in any classes with... I don't think I was in any classes. There were four kids who came in, um, three boys and one girl who came into the school. And I wasn't, I think, throughout the rest of junior high, I was not in classes with any of them. So I, you know, I never, I never throughout, in fact, high school ever became friends, never ha came across social circles that were integrated for me. Um, so it was more an ideal uh, than anything that, that I personally benefited from. Were the neighborhoods pretty segregated? Very segregated. And the churches? and the churches. I went to an Episcopal church. It was, you know, I'm not sure if it was, it was consciously segregated, but certainly it was a white church. 
Did you did you experience any instances of, of um, antagonism from your schoolmates? You White know, schoolmates? I I did around a separate. Um, a separate issue. My mother uh, never finished college before she got married and had children and in about 1960 wanted to go back to school um, and she had credits, she had two years of credits and wanted to get a degree in social work um, and when she looked around at the schools in Virginia and in the district the only school that would take all of her undergraduate credits from 20 years prior was Howard University. Mm -hmm. So in 1961, as a 41-year-old, 42-year-old woman, mm -hmm. white woman, she went to Howard at the height of the civil oh. rights and activist, wow. um, black activist movement. That was the very year that that nonviolent action group, which later became SNCC, SNCC. was formed, 61. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I wish I could have, I wish she had lived long enough that I could have talked to her about what it was like to be the minority student in that situation, both by age and by race. Um, and it was only at that point that I was approached by a social group that I had hung out with since junior high who um, ridiculed my mother for being at Howard. And I kind of lost that social friendship network, um, all but my very best friend, who actually didn't know that this had happened until we went back to our 50th reunion. Um, so I, I, it impacted me in that way, personally and socially, but otherwise, and, and it changed how, it's changed how social um, functions happened at school. There were, for a while, no school dances, so they all happened off campus um, and were then resegregated in that way. Uh, and I think other kinds of activities, for a while, stopped. But by the time I got to high school, there were school dances um, and there were school trips that took place, so that, that didn't last forever. What about sports? Um, that's where Janet, Janet and I realized our age difference of uh, four years because um, uh, I was a cheerleader. It was an all-white squad. I looked back at my yearbook. There was a black student or two on the football team, um, not on the varsity basketball team. That was a state championship team. Uh, and by the time Janet was in school, the cheerleaders were integrated the teams were integrated. So things changed quickly, hmm. um, although I'm sure it seemed very slow at the time. When things were changing quickly, was there still big resistance uh, at, at any level? I mean, w were there groups like the Defenders still, or, or was that fading out? Well, uh, the Defenders were very active at the time of integration. Um, in looking back through, just thinking about this interview and looking back through uh, things that I had saved, in a scrapbook among my Debbie Reynolds, Eddie Fisher pictures, <laughs> I found a page that said um, that said opposition to to integration at Stratford Junior High School, and in it was a letter from the Defenders of State Sovereignty and Individual um, Liberties, sent to me as a 14-year-old at my home address, telling me that I did not have to go to school. Um, to an integrated school that I could change schools no matter what the Arlington administration, school administration told me, that I could stay home from school and resist and would not be counted absent and would not be expelled from school mm -hmm. and sent with it a, um, a book, a report done by the Committee on the District of Columbia House of Representatives two years prior investigating public schools in Washington, D.C. and coming to the conclusion that it was the integration of the schools that had um, compromised the value um, of the Washington, D.C. schools. So that was sent to me at home. I don't remember receiving it now, but looking back it was important enough to me that I saved it and labeled it along with Debbie Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> 
Any other little stories or anecdotes that you want to bring up before we conclude? What did you think of Mr. Stocker? Uh, well, I want to say <laughs> that um, Not without, his son. <laughs> without knowing that um, he would be my future father-in-law, I knew of his work and how important it was and how respected it was. And when I received my diploma graduating from high school, I walked on the stage and received it from him, and that was one of my proudest moments of high school, mm -hmm. that I knew how important, it, how important he had been to the education in Arlington, and what a great honor it was to get a diploma from him. Beautiful. Thank you. You're most welcome. We've been interviewing um, Susan Stocker. The interviewers are Anka Decker, Bonnie Rowan, and Ann Gallivan. Thank you, Susan Stocker. Thank you.